Have you ever heard of Western Airlines? And no, I don't mean the major US airline that served the United States for over 60 years before being merged with Delta in 1987, but Western Airlines, the 2007 Washington State-based low-cost airline that operated for less than a month. This company was one of many US-based low-cost startup airlines that popped up in the early to mid-2000s that failed, along with others such as Song by Delta and Ted by United. This is Western's story. In 2004, Bellingham International Airport, an airport that serves the city of Bellingham in northwestern Washington state, had limited commercial airline service. The airport needed to bring in more passenger traffic, so to fix that, airport officials set a goal to bring in airlines that would serve popular western U.S. vacation destinations direct from Bellingham. This move attracted a lot of low-cost airlines like Allegiant, Skybus, and other full-service carriers like Delta. In addition, two local businessmen with aviation backgrounds saw a good opportunity to jump in and start a new airline. But, as we know, when there's a lot of companies meeting the same demand in a limited customer base, not everyone will come out alive. The two businessmen decided to revise a former brand, Western Airlines, and changed it to fit a low-cost model. Western's original slogan of, the only way to fly, was changed to, still the only way to fly. Delivery received some modifications as well. A red and white striped tail and the giant word Western in the front of the plane replaced the giant red W striped across the fuselage. Its wet leased 737-400 aircraft from Extra Airways would feature a two-class layout of 150 seats. It's unclear exactly how many 737s the airline used, but only one aircraft I could find, November 42 X-Ray Alpha, was painted in the new Western livery. According to Wikipedia, only one aircraft was left when the airline stopped flying. Allegiant got to Bellingham first during the same year in 2004 since they were already an established airline and began operations to Las Vegas with MD-80 aircrafts. Western didn't even enter into business with Bellingham Port Authority until a year later in late 2005 when they announced they would be leasing out gate space. In 2006, Western was officially founded as a company and declared they would be serving four destinations directly from Bellingham, which included San Diego, California, Ontario, California, Phoenix Mesa, Arizona, and Reno, Nevada. This was later changed to three destinations after Western dropped Reno before beginning service. Finally, on January 18, 2007, Western began flying as a charter airline. They received approval to begin operations, but hadn't yet been recognized as a commercial airline by the FAA. The first flight flew successfully to Ontario, California, and over the next few days, the airline completed its other scheduled services with what seemed like no issues. But this was all the calm before the storm, because just a couple weeks later, it was apparent that the rebranded airline was going through trouble. On February 7th, just 20 days after beginning operations, Western suspended flights with the intention of reorganizing their financial state. But out of all the things that could possibly go wrong, what kind of issue would cause an airline to stop flying after less than three weeks? Well, before even beginning operations, Western immediately ran into issues with collecting credit card payments from customers, which meant they couldn't pay their outstanding debt due at the end of each month to suppliers, including aircraft lease payments, fuel vendors, and over $21,000 in airport rental fees. The problem was traced back to the company being unable to obtain a merchant identification number, which is essential to collect payments from credit card companies and to protect customers from fraud. Without one, the banks wouldn't deposit money into Western's account, which meant they had no stream of revenue. When the company suspended flights, Extra Airways, the owner of their 737-400s, continued to return passengers home, but many future trips were also cancelled. Western issued a press release that the flight suspension was only temporary while they got their financial situations in order, and they intended to move to a less expensive office space. They would also work out the issue with their merchant ID number by setting up payments through PayPal and beginning flights again very shortly. Unfortunately, Western never worked through its financial problems and never flew again. But what can we learn from Western? We can say that since one of the biggest contributors to their demise was a poorly set up company with no way to collect revenue from customers, that when starting any kind of business, it's a good idea to make sure you have a solid plan. Also, it's good to strike while the iron's hot. Although this isn't as significant to why Western collapsed, since Allegiant started operations first, they had already taken a decent chunk of the market share. Additionally, passengers still had incentive to take other well-established carriers like Alaska and Allegiant since they also offered competitive ticket prices and had more established frequent flyer programs. Western didn't do everything wrong though. The airline had identified a potentially profitable market demand, had followed the trend of a low-cost model, and had no recorded accidents. 
If Western had structured their operations properly from the beginning, there's a chance they would have lasted more than 20 days, and maybe even expanded to become an even larger airline with its own planes and more destinations. Nowadays, Allegiant has taken over most of Bellingham's market and uses the airport as a focus city. It's an example of the low-cost direct service market done right, and what Western probably could have been. As for November 42 X-Ray Alpha, the least 737-400 in the Western livery, it went back to extra airways to be used for chartering services, and it made its way through a few more owners before ending up at ASL Airlines Hungary in 2015, where it is still in operation to this day. Rebranding an old popular company to fit the business trend might sound like a good idea, but if you mismanage your finances, you might not make it through the month. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I know I never do videos like this, and this little story time documentary thing is new for me, but if you guys want to see me cover more airlines like this one, please let me know in the comments below. Lastly, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe for more. And as always, stay safe and have a wonderful day everyone.